Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. Ray's Dynamics here. Y'all know how we do honest reviews, honest opinions. We race, we have fun, and we offer insight. Today is one of those insightful videos about a wheel you may purchase. As you guys know, I did the Bavarian Simtech Mega Pro reel here. Uh, review just a few weeks ago. Bavarian Simtech were nice enough to send it over to me to review because I bought the first one. They wanted some honest feedback. Um, I had reviewed that one. And offered if I wanted to keep it, I'd get a discounted price. And of course, I took them up on that offer um, because it's just an amazing wall. And I sold my Omega One. Um, so, yeah, really excited about this. Uh, so, what we've got going on here, we've got the Pit Stop app that they offer with this wheel. And it's really in its beta stages, but there's been some stuff that's been released that they sent over for me to check out and take a listen to. And I'm hoping that I can share those details with you. So looking at this, what you're going to see on the screen is a few things. So what I'm going to do, let's get myself in the corner. Let's minimize myself here so that I am not as obtrusive and in the way that I'm smaller, right where I belong. <laughs> um, with that being said, on the wheel, they've enabled some things. So what I'm going to do is close this out. This is what you're going to see when you first open it. I was looking at the launch control feature. I've been playing around with it for a few days. Um, and I like it a lot. I don't use it often because I don't race a car that uses it, but I've been trying it in different cars. If you're a P-Cup driver, oh my God, that sounds like it'd be a great thing. Um, so again, with that being said, really cool things. Not going to go in detail because we went over some of those before, but again, firmware, I have used this wheel for 147 hours, 15,000 shifts already. I like the wheel a lot. Um, awesome wheel, great things. Not much I can say about it. If you need to have new farm more installed, it'll be installed right here. Again, this only really supports the Omega Pro. The Omega One is not currently supported by this app. I know in the future they're looking to get that wheel in here as well. It may not be able to support all the first edition wheels just because of how, you know, how things are created initially. But I know at some point they want to have all of the wheels be able to operate through this. Um, but it's no different than companies like, you know, uh, GSI who have uh, SimOS. Some of their early wheels don't work with it. Their new wheels do. And that's sometimes what happens. And the innovation happens, and I'm glad Bavarian Simtech are figuring out ways to innovate and move forward in a very short period of time. So pretty cool to me to see that they're doing this, and I hope the Omega Ones get added to this soon because some of the features are really cool. Wheel settings, we went over initially, but just some cool things. If you want to change the encoder pulse width, whether you want them to be short and fast or delayed and longer, you can change that. You can set the type of gray hill mode you want it to be. Remember to calibrate them to zero when you first get the wheel, because they may not be calibrated, as we know. And then your clutch, how you can activate a button, dual access, dual, dual clutch, or and also set a dual clutch zone um, or dead zone. I just left it at default because that's worked for me, so I have no problems. But we want to look at some of the cooler features they've added, which will be launch control and some things they've added on the dash that I think are cool. This is their new dash that they've launched. The first one for the Pro did not show you all of the information that you can make a change in this app that it would tell you. But as they're building this in real time, uh, two people really working on this will father and son. Um, one of the things they've I've relayed to them and they've relayed to me, it's a slow process. It takes a while. Now, granted that I have the wheel. I know like many of you, that can be frustrating. Um, and I've told them like, hey, like that can be frustrating. I have the wheel, but the software is not ready or there's some things that they're still working out. But again, I think when you buy a wheel at this price point, you want it to be ready right now. But for me, I'm always willing to, as long as it's coming, especially when you're spending $2,000, $1,500, $1,800 on a wheel, some things happen over time. I mean, if you look at any great company, again, I always say GSI because the quality of this wheel, I'm going to compare to them a lot. And being that I've had a GSI wheel, they didn't have their SIM OS ready right at the start. Um, those things take time. They've had numerous versions of that software and updates have come. So I will tell you, like I tell anybody, I know it will suck at times to not have all the latest greatest right now. But be patient. Those things are coming. And if you have an issue, please reach out to Colia or Klaus. Hit up the Discord, people like myself, and so many people are there to help you along the way. Um, you guys know you can always hit me on my Discord at any point in time down below. With that being said, 
first thing they've added on the dash, they've added some new features where you can see things like fuel. Uh, you can see things, if I can get this up, you can see tire wear, which again, if you're in iRacing, doesn't really help you. ACC, significantly better for that. Um, you can see track temperature, uh, and you can see electronics. You know, These things are useful. Now, what I've brought up to the team at Bavarian Simtech, we live in the US. These things need to be in the Imperial system as well, because I have my SIM hub calibrated to give me mile per hour, gallons in Fahrenheit and PSI. So these things need to be made to match those things, because otherwise, for me, I do not have 16.1 liters. Um, it is not 82 degrees Celsius on the track. That would be ridiculously burning hot. Um, and, you know, things are not going to make any sense to me as you click through these. So again, you know, kilometers per hour doesn't matter to me. I need to know mile per hour. Wish we were on metric, but that's a whole nother story. One that we can have years down the road. <laughs> So again, they've made some updates to the software. And again, these are simply done by tapping your screen. You can go right through them pretty easily. Anywhere you type a uh, tap, it'll work. So again, I'm gonna put mine back to the default fuel. With that being said, you'll see where it says ignition off, engine off, tells you right then and there. So you know when it's time to start your car, what you need to do, what you need to change. With that being said, I'm gonna take a look at a few things first. Before we jump into what we're going to take a look at, which is launch control, and close that out, they've made a bunch of these settings and things you can change right on the wheel. Again, if you hold down the two encoders down here and you push it in, you'll get into what is called edit mode. Once you're in edit mode, all of the things you see on the screen are those things. And you see my clutch is jumping. I need to recalibrate it because I've been messing around with it. Um, but when you get it, you can make a lot of these changes that you see in wheel settings right on the wheel as well. So what you can do is you can change things like the gray hills from encoder uh, to switch continuous and pulse, uh, but I keep my defaults into encoder. Remember those are these four here. You're not gonna change these two at the bottom. They're gonna be defaulted to encoder. And I really use these to flick through, um, but again, the gray hills, you'll wanna go ahead and make that change there. When you get the wheel, you're gonna calibrate your clutch. So I'm gonna hold what is the top button here of the two on the bottom? You're gonna hold it in, pull it, release. Do the second one, pull it, and release. Now it's back to zero because I've calibrated them. I've been messing around with it. Now that it's back to zero, a bunch of things can be changed right here on the wheel. So what I can do is one, I can change which side is the master clutch. So for me, my master clutch is always on the right. And then my slave is on the left. It's currently mapped to dual access. These are things that you can change by simply clicking on the buttons at the bottom here. So depending on how you want to use it, I use it as dual clutch. So when I pull in one, pull in the other, I get to 100%. Release my master, slowly release my clutch. I can take off, especially when you're in a formula car um, or a pickup. We know those things will matter, especially at the start. You can gain a lot of time and a lot of positions with the great start so being able to do those things right here just makes your life 10 times easier so with that being said let's say you get in here and you want to make a change i pull in my slave it's at 65 percent, and that's for this profile let's say i go to profile two i pull in my now my clutch my slave clutch it's at 51 percent. what i'm going to do here will matter so let's say I'm driving a pickup. Now, I don't drive pickups because it's not my forte, but I can rotate this left one and it's really gonna reduce it by 10. Now, if I then change it to a different profile, I can, again, reduce it by 10, raise it by 10. I can change different profiles. Now, if I wanna move it by one, I'm gonna go all the way to the right and now I can make those incremental changes by one. So if I go back to profile one, that's at 65%. If I want to change to 64, I simply rotate to 62, 61, 60. So depending on the car, you may want to have different profiles for each car. You can make that change right here. 
And again, once you dial it out, I'm going to go back to profile one. It's at 60. I'm going to make it 65 because that's what I would use. And now when I pull the master, now it's at 100 percent. So I can release it there. Easy peasy. Now, let's say I've done all that. I've made my master clutch. I've set my dual clutch and now I need to get out of this. Remember, if you're in a race and you forget to get out of the settings and you are using, let's say, a lovely dash because you want to use something different, that's fine. You will not see this menu pop up because you're using a completely different dash. So if it's not there, you will either have to have some sim hub expertise to move this setting screen and all of the information that you get here onto another dash or just use this dash and I think you'd be perfectly fine. Once you're done with it, you want to get out of it, you simply push that middle button and you're done. Easy peasy. Now, one of the coolest features of them all, launch control. So launch control does all of the things that we would normally do, whether you're, you know, you're going to hold your clutch, you're going to release your master, slowly release the slave till you get and are able to take off. Launch control could do all that for you. You simply come into the app, you click on launch control. It's really cool. So let's say I'm using right now, you'll see in a second, I'm using a super formula car. All you're going to do is you're going to go ahead. Once you set it up, you're going to scroll down and it's got all the directions. It will take you a little bit to get used to it. Don't get me wrong. Pull the master clutch to hundred percent to activate launch control. You'll see it on the screen it says launch control is ready. Then you're going to release it and it's going to do all of the slow release for you. So let's do it again and I'll come down here so you can see the first and second stage. So I'll pull it. Now it's ready. I let go. It slowly does all of the slave clutch that I would normally do once I get to my bike point. So again, launch control will save you. And trust me, it is not cheating. iRacing has cleared this. It's not any type of hack. You can have launch control. You're fine. So once you get that set up, now all you need to do is you need to set up your bite point, your predefined bite point, depending on the car. So if you're racing a pickup or a Formula One or a Formula Two or Formula Three or any type of car that's taken off on the line that you have to worry about a clutch, you just map it here. Remember, this operates in milliseconds. So again, how long do you want it to delay before it goes through? So it jumps to my bite point at 50%. It'll travel in a linear fashion, so linear fashion, based on the millisecond, so the bite point to the clutch point in the amount of milliseconds. It'll get through that first stage, then that second stage, the percentage is going to hit. So you have your, you're holding them in, release it, you slowly release, boom. So you get to a fixed percentage for that slave clutch before you just let go of it and you take off. So this will do all of that. And again, you map it in milliseconds till you run 100% complete. The great thing about it also is if you do it and now all of a sudden, oh crap, I don't want to use launch control because I set it up to use this profile for just a pickup. As you can see, it's 50%, but I'm in a Formula One car and I've got my profile one set. I can just abort it. So if I pull it in and I've activated launch controls ready, now all I have to do is pull the slave clutch now it's a boarded launch control. Now I can do my regular, see, launch and it slowly release. And the 50% you see there is not what it's going to go to because I have a boarded launch control. It's going to go to my predefined profile that I have set, which is another great thing. So we'll take a look at it real quick. So I'm going to jump here into some iRacing. Is again, let's see. So let's get out. So we've got a super formula car. What we're going to do is let's get this on track because why not? As you can see, the app, this car is super crazy. Not my favorite car to drive. Let's get here on some open road. Now that we're here, we put the car in first, we pull on the master clutch. And what we're going to do is we're going to rev the 50%, whatever that percentage is, we're going to hold it and we're going to release. And look at that, just like that, launch control takes off. And I don't drive this car, so let's get to another part. 
So we cheated. Or did we? <laughs> now let's say again, I get here and I've enabled launch. And I was like, oh crap, I don't want to do that. Now I can do it myself. Close it to 50%. Slowly race. And I got a lot more wheel spin there. So again, something you can always use. Now, one of the coolest features I think they've implemented, and I'm going to show you really quickly, because if ever you're playing the game, and this has happened to me, uh, what was I playing? I was using the McLaren wheel from Fnatic, and I was driving in Knockhill uh, in a race. And my clutches stopped working. And it was the worst feature, worst experience ever. So if you want to enable what they call safe mode, what you would do, these two bottom buttons here, as you can see, it says fail safe mode. If I hold them in at the same time, it's gonna hold it. Now it says active. Let's say these failed. Oh my god, it tells you on the screen. Fail safe, fail safe. I can't shift. Now you use these optional paddles, if you were smart like me to get them. Now I can shift. I can finish my race. And I'm using these smaller... Now again, the odds of your clutches or your sh paddles failing... I mean, I've had two Bavarian Simtech wheels and I'm looking forward to future ones. The odds of it failing, I would say, are slim to none. But... At the end of the day, who knows? It could happen. Now, you will ask me, Ray, well, how do I get out of fail-safe mode? Do I simply do it again? No, because it no longer works. See? Nothing works because the wheel is entered fail-safe. It believes it's not working. You put it in the fail-safe. So that will no longer shift. To get that feature back, now again, you simply turn off your wheel Or unplug it and plug it back in and once you do that you should be good to go ships just like normal so again some really cool features again I I think this is the coolest one like like just being able to say all right ready go I can get off the line significantly quicker and maybe I'll drive this car. I don't know. But I will say this. It's a great feature to have. It's something I think would be worthy for anybody who gets this wheel. If you decide to get one of these wheels again, the link is down below. If you click on my link, I'll get a commission off of that sale essentially through an affiliate link. You also have my code Grace Dynamics that you can use for an additional 3% off. If you say, you know what, Ray, I don't want to give you any credit for anything for any part of this. That is perfectly cool. I am not going to hold it against you. I completely understand. You don't have to click on my link. You can click on the regular Bavarian Semtech link. They get all the credit, but you can still get the 3% off. Don't be foolish enough to not take the 3% off of your sale of any wheel that you buy. So you go out and you spend a bunch of money and get a wheel and get the QR. Save 3%. Like, that's an easy win-win. Again, you don't have to click on my link. Save your 3% get you one of these wheels, I think you will be thankful that you did. So as always, if you like the content, if you like what I'm sharing, if you like what I'm doing, if you want to offer feedback, or you just have some insight you want to provide, hit me up. Thumbs up, notifications on, subscribe to the channel, and I'll talk to you later. And I'm going to sit here in my small box. Hope to see you on the next one. Peace.